Hey everyone, so another day and another controversy surrounding LG TVs. I posted a video probably a couple of weeks ago now stating the lack of DTS t uh, decoder tuners on the LG CX models or the C10s. If you haven't seen that video, go check that out. Um, but in this video, what I wanted to discuss was something that one of my um, subscribers actually sent me with regards to uh, HDMI 2.1. So um, what I'll do is I'll just post in a little overview of the conversation I had with um, the subscriber, I believe Abraham Torres was the name. Um, and anyway, it, it relates to um, the HDMI port ports on all of uh, the OLED and LCD TVs that uh, LG are actually producing for 2020. So this article was posted on Forbes um, yesterday, uh, 4th of May 2020, and it seemingly confirms that um, LG have kind of backtracked on what they actually did with their 2019 models. So as it says here, LG has contacted me today to say that uh, contrary to initial communications and in, turn in a turnaround from HDMI 2.1 situation introduced with its 2019 4K TVs, none of its 4K TVs, uh, 2024 K TV, sorry, um, OLED LCD will carry full bandwidth HDMI ports capable of handling HDMI 2.1's maximum of 48 gigabits per second data rate. Uh, it goes on to say, obviously, the good news is that this almost certainly doesn't matter in real world terms. So essentially, this this is the main um, area where it explains what what full HDMI 2.1 is. So the 48 gigabits per second is basically uh, there to try and handle uncompressed 12 bit 4K at 120 uh, 120 hertz with the full RGB 444 chroma sampling. Um, LG goes on to tell me now that while HDMI's and premium 19s were indeed full, yeah, so th that's just confirming that the 2019 models were indeed full um, 2.1. So they've got the maximum future proofing in terms of capabilities. Um, and then it says uh, all four HDMI's on the WX, GX, the CX. OLED TVs will instead handle 10-bit rather than 12-bit 4K at 120 uh, hertz with RGB 444 chroma sampling. This uh, implies a likely 40 gigabits per second data rate. Now, initially, if you look at that, you might have a bit of a, a meltdown thinking that LG have done a Samsung here and in the way that Samsung have reduced the local dimming zones on all of their 4K TVs for 2020, so they've gone from the hundreds on the Q90R and similar 2019 models down to between, say, 50 and 70, um, probably less than 50. I think some of the, the Q70 or the Q80T, um, they actually have like 47, something like that, so, uh, local dimming zones. So it, it almost looks as though uh, LG would have done a similar thing where obviously there's, there's that controversy surrounding the DTS decoder on the UK models anyway. Um, I have been told by people across the world, um, Australia, some in Europe, um, some in America, where according to their websites, the DTS decoder is in there, but the UK website definitely lists it as being missing. And it was also um, stated in an article separately as well that LG did confirm that the, the um, DTS decoder was removed. So with this article coming out and obviously LG confirming that they are backtracking it seems strange that they pushed themselves into a position where they they would have been um, market leading in terms of future proofing um, because all the competition out there Samsung and um, anybody else Sony they're not really pushing for this kind of future proofed TV that you buy and you, you don't have to worry about anything um, by them backtracking on the full HDMI 2.1. They've almost done a Samsung where Samsung don't even confirm there's a HDMI 2.1 because um, they, they're literally just picking and choosing the features that they believe uh, will actually be relevant, which is similarly to what, what um, LG are doing here. So LG are basically confirming that they're taking the processing power of the Gen 3 the A9 Gen 3, and they're putting it towards other things rather than just trying to prioritize on um, full uh, HDMI 2.1 maximum um, bandwidth. Now, 
it's not all bad because what you have to remember is um, the LG C10, CX, GX, all of these, they're still only running 10-bit panels. So I know we there's um, ways in which they can manipulate um, picture information and metadata that's coming through and try and get 10-bit um, data not accurately so obviously um, in the past it would have been 10-bit down onto an 8-bit panel um, now obviously you're, you're talking about a 12-bit panel being rendered down onto a 10-bit panel so essentially it's not not all bad news because effectively what what they're doing is if the limitations of the panel itself are 10-bit um, then by supporting the full bandwidth and basically um, supporting 12-bit data it's not really going to translate into anything that you can see on screen I don't know whether there will be other benefits obviously the extra bandwidth means that um, just the quality um, more so than anything else obviously if you've got the eight extra 8 gigabits uh, per second uh, data rate then you might be able to pull through other bits of information that maybe a future codec might actually be able to utilize um, however at this point what basically when it comes down to the color uh, depth of it going from a 10 bit to a 12 bit and there obviously is quite a big jump between um, it doesn't sound a lot but if you actually look into it going from 8 bit to 10 bit to uh, 12 bit there is a massive uh, jump in terms of color volume um, between those uh, different sets so on from that point of uh, of view obviously it's it's not really going to be utilized so I don't know whether people should be agreeing with LG's decision here and just accepting that obviously these these panels um, if they can't actually produce reproduce what the full bandwidth is then is there any point but on the flip side obviously it's, it's that point where these TVs the 2020 TVs depending on where you buy it especially um, if you say for example if you buy a UK model and all of a sudden you've got no DTS decoder and your HDMI 2.1 is no, no longer fully HDMI 2.1 and yet the price is still as high as it was meant to be so um, in here in the UK um, they're not out yet you can't buy any of these 2020 models despite April being the normal release date for for all of these and obviously you can see from youtube videos that they are popping up on on in europe and elsewhere um for reviews and people are buying them and posting videos of comparisons um one of my early videos um quite a few people posted they don't understand why there's such a negativity um and i actually replied back to that that most people clicking onto the link or expecting me to be, have a side-by-side -side comparison but what they don't realize is it's not even close to being out in the UK yet so imagine you, that you've um, waited off buying the 2019 models um, you've seen the 2020 models you're thinking in your mind um, 8k is coming so this is probably the last hurrah of the 4k OLED uh, panels or even the QLEDs for that matter as well. So you go out, you're looking to buy a 2020 model. Obviously the, the salesmen, they're gonna give you all the, the normal um, pitch and they'll, they'll try and sell you this thing based on the fact that it's the 2020 model, it's the newest and best and shiniest thing. And in reality, what you're getting is you're getting much less of a TV. The 2019 TV, um, when it comes down to hardware and hardware uh, capabilities, the chip aside, is a better TV for the UK model anyway because you, you've got that DTS decoder you don't have to worry about that you've got full bandwidth whether that can be utilized or not is a different matter um, that's obviously something um, as, as the name suggests future proofing because you don't know what could come down the line that could actually utilize it um, maybe somebody will post in the comments who's a lot smarter than me and a lot smarter than most um, consumers out there um, just stating exactly whether it can or can't be utilized but essentially this this video was just to point it out this similarly again I hadn't actually seen this um, prior to being sent sent the the link from um, one of my subscribers so I just wanted to make a video and as with all, all of my videos they tend to tend to go on a bit bit too long for what the actual point is um, so what I'll do is I'll leave it at this and I'll open it up to you guys. So obviously post down in the comments your thoughts on this, whether this is something that would uh, deter you from buying a 2020 model or whether you see it uh, similarly 
to LG and you basically you don't see any benefit in having the 12-bit uh, capabilities and you'd rather just use that CPU power um, elsewhere. Um, bearing in mind that I, I would expect that when it comes to processing power as LG are uh, claiming that they're, they're utilizing further for other things you wouldn't actually be using that processing power um, to my mind anyway um, unless you're actually um, throughputting that particular data so for example if you're not getting a 48 gigabits per second signal then there's no need for you to set up your um, architecture and everything to work so then it's constantly trying to um, filter and uh, process 48 gigabits per second obviously if you've got lower quality content coming through you only need to do as much as you need to do um, so in theory um, that that line doesn't really wash wash with me um, that's almost a marketing line in my mind where they're they're justifying um, removing one of those features and it almost seems to me like 2020 is a year where all of the manufacturers are kind of cutting corners cutting costs trying to get away with as much as they can and the disappointing thing with um, the LG perspective is the fact that in in the past obviously they've been quite open and they've been very vocal about we want to give full support on HDMI 2.1 and um, they've been very vocal in terms of all their features and they've they've left this one until a point where they've already pretty much had a lot of the early reviews out there and they, they didn't mention it in any of their um, uh, CES shows or anything like that obviously we've not been able to have many other shows in the meantime because of um, COVID-19 um, but it's something that they've obviously kept on the table for as long as possible and now that they're probably thinking yeah that we need to mention this publicly um, it, it's still better to have done this rather than for somebody have to have actually found this out and then gone back to LG um, it, that probably would have been a, a bit more of a controversy um, whereas this it's they're confirming it but um, it doesn't really wash wash well with me um, personally if I was whenever I wait a year um, I'd expect at the very minimum to get what you had last year not for for manufacturers to be removing and um, uh, reducing the quality of the product as as Samsung have done with theirs um, with their 4k flag flagships if you want to call them that um, they're pushing towards 8k and it almost looks as though judging by this that um, LG are also looking at a similar thing as well so anyway as always um, post any of your thoughts and comments in the comment section below if you did like this video obviously give us a thumbs up um, if, if you're not already uh, please subscribe it really does help the channel out and also share on your social media uh, platforms just to try and spread the word help the channel grow as well thank you very much